Hi, I'm Tommy Calloway, and today I'm going to show you how to make this insanely bright LED panel. Um, I looked around at a few other builds, like on cha on channels like DIY Perks, and the panel that I make here is 30% brighter than the brightest panel that he's ever made, and I'll show you why in this video. Um, but this should be all the light you need for any video work you have. Uh, the panel should cost about 50 bucks. Um, so I'm gonna go through and give you a list of materials and go through the entire build process. It's, this video is gonna be about 30 minutes. Uh, so pay attention, have fun, and grab a glass of scotch and enjoy the build. We used, we got a roll of aluminum from Home Depot for like 15 bucks and we're gonna use that as like a sort of a heat sink for the LEDs and then the aluminum on a piece of MDF. Let's get a list of materials here. We need, we need a roll of aluminum, some washers, some nuts, some bolts. We went with three inch bolts. Rolls of LEDs, a glass of scotch, possibly a beer. Two foot by two foot MDF. Your choice of wood, we went with a uh, one inch wood and half inch uh, balsa wood maybe? I don't know. Just go to Home Depot and find the wood that you want to use. And this is going to be for framing a piece of plexiglass in the front, and also for mounting the mount for tripods in the back. 14 gauge stranded wire. Some 20 gauge blue stranded wire. Two on off switches. Some electrical tape. A soldering iron and a roll of solder. Heat shrink tubing. And a 12 volt 10 amp DC power supply. And I'll have all these links in the description of this video. Sorry about the video quality. I don't have any good lighting. That's why I'm building it. Um, so we got two foot by two foot uh, blocks or sheets of MDF. We're going to string these out all the way this, uh, for two feet. And we have 10 amp, uh, 12 volt 10 amp power supplies. So we can power three rolls of these because each roll takes up three amps. I actually ended up using three and one third rolls because it took exactly 10 amps and it also filled up the two aluminum strips perfectly. Kind of like a, the aspect ratio of like a regular TV right now, instead of the regular square. When you're cutting these, make sure you cut them right by the copper straps, or well, by the copper leads there, right between them. like that long. I think this is probably better. What do you think? I think it's safer because if we need the edges for something, I don't know. Okay, that's, that's how that's we're going to go. Alright, that's our target length. Alright, so we cut these strips up just long enough to fit on these aluminum strips that we cut out of uh, the roll of aluminum that we had. Now we're going to put these strips on here just like that, and we're going to fill these strips of aluminum up with uh, LEDs. Uh, with, with the adhesive that's on the back of these things. So let's do the first one. probably put electrical tape down first so the copper leads don't get shorted on the aluminum. That'd be a really good idea. Here, I'll put this back on there. So it's occurred to me that the copper, when we solder it to the wire, might short across the aluminum here. Uh, so I'm gonna cover it with uh, electrical tape first. Cool. Alright. 
So we're gonna fill these up with uh, LEDs now. <clears throat> so we found out because we have a lot of, uh, we, we bought LEDs really cheap and it looks like they're kind of soldered together with like Frankenstein with other pieces of LEDs. Um, these are actually soldered, because they're soldered together, the back of these things have exposed copper. So we need to cover the back of these exposed ones with electrical tape so they don't make a, you know, they don't uh, short across the aluminum. And uh, so that's, that's what we're doing now. All right, so we're done with four strips of aluminum. Uh, make sure that the numbers that say 12 volt on them are all the same direction. So we have them all facing that way. So this is what the panels look like now. Uh, we've attached them all to the aluminum uh, with the tape at the ends to prevent any uh, contact between the aluminum and the little copper or you know, the little copper connection terminals there. Um, we're now going to solder uh, wires to the positive terminals on the right side of all four of these panels. I've got a couple, all the rest of them down there. And the negative uh, terminals down here. So let's get to it. <clears throat> so one of the things that has to get done that's kind of annoying um, is actually you have to strip this wire in a way so there's an opening every, you know, like uh, three quarter inch or something. And I saw this little trick on a DIY Perks channel, so thanks for that. So let's just do this, it's ready. So you strip a nice good chunk at the end there, and then take about three quarters of an inch You leave it right there like that. And if you mess up, that's totally fine. You can just cut it off and use what you've got and then start a new chain. So if you can, make a little chain like this. If you can't, it's fine. But this is really helpful. We need two chains of 15 per aluminum strip because we're gonna solder these in a big, solder all the positives on this side and all the negatives on this side. <clears throat> So I found a couple things while doing this project. Um, I tried a couple different wiring methods. I tried using uh, uh, strips of magna wire um, wired to each positive terminal here of different length uh, connected down here in one big ball of solder. Um, and I found that that was a really inefficient and difficult way to wire these all up. And uh, so I went with the method of a single piece of wire uh, stripped many different times in different sections or just you know a couple different wires to do the job um, and I think I'm going to redo this magna wire section as uh, this method right here and also uh, while testing the strips I found that this strip right here is uh, it's not lighting up all the way like I may have burned it when I was soldering it because I'm not like excellent at doing this yet so I'm going to replace just this strip this little three piece section right here um, so I'm going to cut it here, I'm going to put some electrical tape under it, and then I'm going to solder these pieces together, and then I'm going to re-solder this connection here. Uh, so I'm going to do that now, and then I'm also going to replace this magna wire section uh, with a strip more like this, because uh, it'll be easier to maintain, and it'll look a lot better in the future. Alright, I'm going to do that now. Alright, so as you can see, I got the panels all set up. I just put some red electrical tape over here on the positive side here so I know which side is positive. Um, and we need to cut the boards out of the, we need to cut the squares out of the MDF to house the electrical panels. There's gonna be two on each one of these. Uh, it looks like each one of these little pieces of wood is gonna be plenty of wood to uh, house the perimeter 
so I can put some plexiglass over the top of it. I don't have the plexiglass yet, but this is gonna be plenty of wood. So I just need to measure uh, with two of these panels and mark off where I want to cut this thing. So this is what the panel is gonna look like. I'm just going to attach these to the MDF with a couple of nuts and bolts. We don't need to glue it or anything because uh, it'll, it'll make it easier to maintain or reuse these pieces in the future. Uh, so I'm gonna get to finding a pencil. Well, that worked way easier than cutting it, just scoring it with a knife. Now I just cut down this wood where we measured earlier. I'm not an expert carpenter by any means. Okay, so here's what it looks like so far. I just rested the panels on there. Um, they're just kind of sitting there, but I'm gonna put these two blocks of wood on here that we cut out. And you see these are not connected yet. I'm gonna have to solder this little wire here. I'm gonna have to connect these two. I'm going to screw these two blocks down. I'm going to screw here, a screw there, a screw there, a screw there, um, or something kind of like that to hold the wood through the aluminum to the second piece of wood there. Um, and I need to drill a hole here and here for uh, to wire the positive and the negative through to the back. And this one is just going to kind of go on right here like this. And there's gonna be some space here and here for the corners. Um, and then this part up here is gonna be open for airflow, as well as to allow me to put any uh, gels or filters through there, maybe a diffuser or something. Uh, but once this is all finished, we're gonna uh, put some plexiglass up on top of that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put these together and we'll get on to the next step. Make sure you tap your holes here because uh, MDF is really weak and I might split if you don't. <clears throat> also cut your large board, the uh, one inch uh, block of wood uh, down to size. So, or one, I don't remember if it was one or one and a half. I guess I could measure, whatever. The, not the small one, the larger piece of wood we bought earlier. Uh, so you can fit it here because we're going to put it under the panel there like this and we're going to drill straight through all that stuff and attach these with the bolts we bought earlier all right <clears throat> all right so this is what the completed assembly will look like kind of um, so we got the these boards attached on each of these corners here uh, we got a washer with uh, these huge bolts over here I'm going to turn over to the back, washer and nut, and uh, then we also have to drill some holes, one hole here, and one hole here, coming through back out here, and here. That's going to let us wire up uh, the positive and negative and mount them to this piece of wood here. Uh, so that's what the panel will look like. We just need to figure out a way to have the tripod mount in here somewhere and then we'll be done. So originally I planned on using a few of these voltage dimmers uh, with a little potentiometer attached. I recommend you don't buy these things. I'm going to do a little experiment here. I'm going to show you why you should not buy these things. <clears throat> So I have it set up so you should be able to see all the relevant components to this experiment. Keep your eyes on the multimeter at the top. We got the power supply on the right and we have the uh, little uh, voltage regulator on the left next to my hand um, and also the positive and negative attached to a strip of LEDs. You can see this device uh, dims the lights pretty well but when you set it to its maximum setting 100% 
it only goes up to about 11 volts and it also only draws about 1.1 amps. Yeah, see 1.1 amps maximum at about 11.11 .11 volts. That's all it's gonna get to. But these lights are rated for 12 volts. So if we just bypass this voltage regulator, which is a pulse width modulation voltage regulator that was set to 100%. Um, so if we just bypass that little device entirely, uh, if you look at the voltage uh, or the, the power supply on the right, you can see that once I figure out how to plug this in, it draws 1.5 amps almost. Um, and the lights are significantly brighter. In fact, it hurts to look at them. Uh, just eyeballing it, they look 30% brighter. So we're just gonna not use the voltage regulator at all, and we're instead going to use a couple of switches. So we'll have the setting of 50% brightness or 100% brightness, and we'll have two panels. Uh, but I don't recommend you buy these uh, devices there I mean you can get a three pack for 20 22 dollars and they are neat and you can use them in other projects if you want but for this project it's gonna steal voltage from you and you're gonna have less bright lights <clears throat> all right so now comes the process of attaching the wires to the, uh, the little panels we built here uh, you cut one kind of long wire because you want to attach from the panel through the hole that we made uh, and wind up somewhere back here. Uh, same with the other side. Uh, so you can attach them both to the power supply. Uh, make sure you properly tin all of your wires. That uh, just means, you know, heat, put the solder on the wires, make sure they're ready to go. And we'll just put these through this hole that we drilled. Make sure the long one attaches to the far piece and the short one will attach to the closer panel. And now you just need to solder those connections where they're supposed to go here. And then we'll have our wires back here that we just need to hook up to power. <clears throat> and just to make sure the wires don't get jostled around too much, after you have them soldered on, stick some hot glue down there. You don't have to do this, but I'm doing it. All right, for this next step, we are going to terminate the negative wires into each other and give them one wire uh, to work off of. So this will be the negative. We have two switches here. Um, each one of these switches is gonna go to one of the positive wires. And then they will do the same thing as the negative wires here and then those will connect to our power supply. So you will be turning the positive of each of these wires off and on to the power supply. And that's just how we're gonna do it. Okay, so just to make sure that you understood that, um, everything, make sure you use plenty of shrink wrap um, when soldering these connections because you want to keep everything nice and tidy. I have some extra wire here I'm gonna leave that there in case I wanna do anything else with this or if I wanna pull it out further without having to uh, you know, make these wires longer manually. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep them nice and tidy. Here's my first one finished uh, for the most part as far as the wiring is concerned. Uh, this is the connector. We got the, the wiring, we got two switches ready to go over here. Uh, I'm gonna attach them probably with like hot glue or something, but this is what it looks like when it's finished up. You notice I used uh, shrink wrap basically everywhere I needed to uh, to make to make sure there's no exposed connections. And this thing is super bright. In the daylight, it's blinding. That's how bright this thing is. Now something I didn't realize. Uh, until I was editing this video is you could completely skip the step of uh, sp essentially um, splicing or whatever it's called merging the two wires into one wire um, if you just do the entire negative wire in series so you just instead of having two separate wires going to the two separate panels for the negative side you just connect the two negative panels and then you have a single wire coming out then you wouldn't have to do this thing that I'm trying to do right now 
um, because you need to control the voltage of the positive side. The negative one can all just be terminated into a single wire. Um, I like having two wires because if I wanted to disassemble the panel or something, um, maybe it makes it a little bit easier. Um, you know, repurpose those panels that we made. But for the purpose of brevity or you know keeping this project quick, you can just use a single wire for the negative side. You only need to use two wires for the positive side. <clears throat> All right, so this piece is connected now. Some shrink wrap. So we got this next wire. Some shrink wrap over it. We need to get the positive wire, so we need to prepare one of those. That will also have shrink wrap over it. And then a large piece of shrink wrap over both. This one is going to connect to our power supply connector. And so we need to make sure we have all the shrink tubing accounted for. Because we won't be able to do it later. So, let's get our negative. Make sure you get the polarities collect correct. This one's negative. tubing will go up there, and then our positive, good, tighten it down nice and tight, slide up your shrink tubing and use whatever you have to close those down. I have a handy heat gun here. I like to use these kind of switches. Um, they're pretty cheap, and they also are decent of decent quality. But what I do is I take this wire, bend it over in kind of a little candy cane shape, there you go, just like this. And then, I basically find the terminal I want to connect it to, and I crimp it on. So it's already tinned, and now it's crimped. Now I'm going to solder it. That ensures a really good connection. Now we've got to make two more wires. It's astounding how messy a workbench can get. It'd go a lot faster, but I'm just horrible at soldering. If you haven't noticed. Okay, and our wires are made. Let's make our little candy can again. And again, we're gonna crimp it on there. I'm gonna do the other switch now. <clears throat> and of course, our last connection, the 
positive. Yeah, the positive output into our two switches. Solder those together. Make sure you have your heat shrink on there. All right, so just an overview of the electronics here. The positive wires come out of this side over here. Each one connects to its own switch, and we take those and we terminate them into a single wire, which goes into our power supply connection positive. The negative comes out, splits into two, the two wires that go to the negative portion. And here's what it looks like. The aluminum panel that they're mounted on should keep the LEDs cool enough uh, to operate and not cause any problems and it won't send any fires. So we just plug in our power supply here. Um, I'll link the components in uh, the description of this video. Uh, so each one of these switches turns on part of this panel. And so you can turn on, you can go basically 50% brightness or 100% brightness. And it is super bright. Like, uh, I, I can't even look at it. It's blinding. It is the brightest panel that I've ever seen. And these LEDs are only like six to eight dollars a strip. Um, they're the cheapy ones that I got from China, but they are excellent. Now, you may want to take this a step further and uh, mount it somehow. So I got a, I got a little tripod that I'm gonna try and mount this to. Um, so, and I got a little hot shoe mount adapter. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, either drilling, just trying to screw it straight into this wood piece right here. Um, I'm also considering just uh, drilling a hole directly through this wood block here and then getting a, a nut or a bolt the proper size to go through this wood and just uh, bolt it onto the light stand. So before I get too far ahead of myself, I did figure out how to mount it on this tripod. And you can see what I did here. Uh, I just screwed the DSLR shoe mount into it with four different screws and it held it on there pretty well. Uh, so I was able to mount it on this little tripod that I got. Um, and it seemed to work pretty well. So I'll uh, leave a link for the tripod and the mount that I used. I used uh, one, one inch or one and a half inch, I think it was one inch uh, self tapping screws. It worked pretty well. Uh, so there's the light in its completed form. It's half on, it's full on. Simple little switches. And that's it. Uh, this light is super bright. It was a really easy build, kind of time consuming. The most time consuming part uh, was one, getting all these LED strips onto the aluminum and then creating the little wires that connect all of these LED strips. That's probably the most time time consuming part of the process. Um, other than that, it's a nice, fun project. It's really easy. Should be pretty cheap. Um, I'll put all the components again in the description of the video. So if you like this project, please subscribe uh, and I will have more fun projects like this in the future. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.